Also this, Illinois Congressman Bobby Rush joining the growing list of Democrats who will not seek re-election. This is the GOP looks poised to make some big gains in November. Let's bring in Carl Rowe, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff. Now, Bobby Rush has been there for a long time. He's had a long career. Uh, he's one of 24 House Democrats not seeking re-election in 2022. This was not a seat that the Republicans could pick up, his in particular, I'm assuming. But when you have someone in leadership decide to retire at this point, they might see the writing on the wall next November, Carl. Absolutely. You know, it's funny, I've been talking the last couple of days uh, via email with Dr. John Petrosik, a friend of mine. Dr. Petrosik is a, uh, uh, was a student uh, trained at the University of Chicago under a fam famous political scientist named Cindy Verba, and then had a long and illustrious career himself at UCLA and the University of Missouri at Columbia, where he was chairman of the government department. John is a political nut. So he <laughs> con he's constantly measuring these things. And we've been talking over the internet about what are the measures of, of how a party is going to do in the, in the midterm elections. And political scientists use five different models. The surge and decline, what's the effect of the previous presidential race, presidential performance, how is the president doing now, and then retirements. They also use, which we, we all have numbers on these, these models, can now generate numbers. We've got two models, campaign spending and campaign quality, that we can't use right now because it's premature. We don't know how much people are raising and how good their candidates are. So what does the model of retirement mean? Today, 10% of the Democrats, Dr. Petrosik says, more than 10% of the Democrats in the House of Representatives are retiring. 6% of the Republicans are retiring. This four-point GOP advantage, if you look at all of the elections since 1962, this would mean that the Republicans would, would this would point to a 40-seat gain for the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Now, the other two models, the surge and decline, points to a smaller gain, 12 to 13. The presidential job approval points to 18. The average is 23. The Republicans are now at 213. 23 would give them 236, which is a pretty good majority in the House of Representatives. I think it's interesting that you just called someone else a political nut. Um, because that must really, he must be really into it if you're calling him a nut. He's really into it. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, the other speculation has been whether Speaker Pelosi will retire. And you had Ro Khanna, who is a progressive member, um, very civil, I would say, very genial kind of guy. But he said this about her. If you're this, excuse me, let me read it from here. I think we want leadership that bridges some of the different ideological wings of the party that is committed to listening to all the perspectives that will be capable of helping move the Senate or things that have stalled in the House and has a bold vision of what we need to achieve for the American public. But whatever it is, I hope they would adopt progressive positions. I have a question, Carl. I mean, don't you think Pelosi has been actually quite accommodating to the progressives? Oh, absolutely. She's been very much so. She's been a, she has always been sort of more liberal than the average House Democrat, but, but she has been more uh, accommodating to the people to the left of her than I, than I thought she would be. And, and look, let's be honest. The Democrats are going to lose the control of the House. Nancy Pelosi is not going to stick around. I assume she's going to run for re-election in the fall of 2022. But if the Democrats lose the House like I believe they will, she's not going to want to stick around for two more years as, as the, and attempt to be the minority leader. So there is going to be a change in the leadership of the Democratic Party if they lose the House, as I believe they will. And Nancy Pelosi is going to retire. I mean, she's 80-some-odd years old. And... Um, you know, she's been there a long time. She's had a great run, but she's not going to want to go back into the minority because in all likelihood, it's going to be not just two years, but four years or six years before the Democrats have a chance to get back in the majority in the House. Well, and the other thing is, have you seen that there are some progressives who are actually calling for already for President Biden to be primaried in 2024? They say he is deeply unpopular. You can see this in the real clear average approval rating over the past eight months and how it's gone down. Just look at that, Carl. Uh, and you know what it, go, what it means to go from the 50s to the 40s, and you start to go much lower. As you see COVID this month, you know, inflation continuing, uh, kids the scrambling to be back in schools. You know, a lot of this will all lead into those decisions about whether to retire and when to get out before the Republicans take over. I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think we've not seen the last of the Democratic retirements. We're likely to see more. We've already got not just sen sen senior Democrats like uh, Rush, who's been there for 30 years, but we've got committee chairs. Three committee chairs have, have announced their retirement. Uh, a, a whip, one of the leadership uh, team, 
uh, we're likely to see, I, I suspect, a significant number of more Democratic uh, retirements, driving that, driving the number in the model above 40. But I think, I think Dr. Petrosic is right. I think the Democrats are going to lose somewhere between the mid 20s and the high 20s, uh, mm -hmm. and in part because that that's not going to be like the 43 that we had in 2010, or I mean 2000. Uh, 14. It's not going to be like the 2010 with 60 some odd. In part because the Republicans did something unusual in 2020, and that is they gained 12 seats in November plus one special right. election earlier in the year for a net gain of 13 seats in the House of Representatives while they lost the White House, mm -hmm. which says something about the strength of the, of the Republicans okay. below the top of the ticket. Well, Carl, you political nut, thanks for being on today. We'll touch base with you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.